Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and on today's DIY Wednesday, we're going to take this wonderful vintage wardrobe and we are going to turn it into amazing shoe storage. I know, right? Let me tell you a little story about this and then we'll get into it. So, as you may or may not know, I live in a house that was built in 1954. The storage is slim to none, and I have quite a few shoes. So, in my old house, I had a big walk-in closet. I was able to make some shoe storage. It was perfect. In this house, not so much. I have been looking for a shoe storage solution. I have, like, a temporary situation going on, which I'll show you, but... I've been like toying with making shelves or getting a dresser and storing shoes in the dresser drawers. I was perusing the old let go or offer up, whatever you want to call it. And I found this gal who was selling this gorgeous wardrobe. It was just my style. I loved it so much. She had it for sale for $200. It was pretty big. I reached out to her. It sounded like she was super jazzed. However, she had to move out of state. She had to keep the wardrobe. It's at her mom's house in my town. So after going back and forth for a couple of days about how big it was and if I could fit it down my hall, whatnot, I told her, I totally adore it. Is your mom available for me to come pick it up the next day? She never, ever got back to me, ever. I love that wardrobe. It was painted. I wouldn't have had to do anything except move it in and then build out the interior. So pissed, I went to probably seven or eight thrift stores, vintage stores, whatever, in my town. The last one that I went to, which is actually kind of right down the street, they had this. And guess what? It was $79. So smaller, lighter weight. I was able to bring it into the house. Davis helped me. I do have to paint it and then I can build out the inside. So we're gonna do a little furniture makeover to give us more storage for things that we need to store. So, girl on let go, you can suck it because I found this one for over $100 cheaper. While not as cute, I will say, while not as cute, totally doable. So these two things right here were kind of hand-me-downs. The old homeowners left these two cabinets. They were in the pantry area. So I pulled them out, grabbed them, put them into my room. Not ideal situation, but this is currently where I am storing my shoes. I can get three pair on each shelf. And then I have this cabinet over here. The issue is, this is not all of my shoes. The remainder of my shoes are just on the floor of my closet. This is not a good situation. I needed a solution and I think I have the perfect one. So here's the wardrobe here that I got at the Ambet thrift store for $79. Now you open it up, super cute. The only issue, unlike the one the gal was selling, this sides don't open. The one she was selling it opened full out. So this one just has the one door. You have all of this space in here. So my plan is I'm gonna measure my shoes and put up wood strips every so often. And then I'm gonna do shelves, boom, boom, boom. And then shoo, 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 shoo. So we're gonna build out the inside of this wardrobe. We're no longer gonna be able to visit Narnia because we're gonna fill it with shelves and fill it with shoes. And then we're gonna paint it and it's gonna look Amazing. So let's get to it. I have a little pad of paper and I have a measuring tape. I need to measure the inside width and the height. And then I'm gonna take a pair of shoes, measure my tallest pair so that I know how far to space apart my shelves. And then I'll divide those inches by the length inches. And then that's how many shelves we'll be able to get. Measuring tape. What's that say? So 62 inches tall, remember that, by, what's that say? 48 inches wide. So I have my little rectangle drawing. I just measured some of my shoes, the space I would need, not that the shoes are this tall, but the space I would need. Shelves that are in between 
eight and nine inches apart. Now we're gonna do some math to see how many shelves we could get being eight or nine inches apart in this situation. So according to my math, I can get five shelves with a nine inch gap in between each of the shelves and the shelf wood being one inch thick, plus we have the bottom, and then there'll be a three inch gap at the top. So technically the first shelf will be 12 inches down from the top and then every other shelf will be nine inches spaced apart with that one inch shelf gap as well. That, you guys are gonna die. I did the measurements. I have my shoes laid out on the floor. I can fit six pair of shoes across here and because this is 17 and a half deep, I can fit a whole nother row. So one shelf is going to house 12 pair of shoes. I know. Now, I just counted my shoes. I have about 50 pair boots. Too tall. I have like three pair of boots. I don't wear boots often. I could probably just get rid of them. Or since I have so much shoe room, I could even eliminate the very bottom shelf and leave from the bottom up open for bigger items. And that might be fun. Maybe some cute boxes, socks, or you know, whatever other storage needs. Now that will minus off 12 shoes of storage. However, I have more than enough room for my current shoe situation and I'll have room to grow. So I was smart, I took all my measurements ahead of time and now I'm gonna run over to the Lowe's to purchase the wood that I need. This backing is very, very thin. So I think this is gonna be more of a wood glue project than anything else. I'm going to get little thin strips of wood to glue along the back and the sides as my shelf supports. And then I'll get my shelves and we'll just plop those right in. I know, exciting. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Let go girl, you can suck it because I'm gonna be able to make this whole thing paint included for less than I was about ready to purchase your wardrobe for. Yeah, just saying. So I have moved the wardrobe out into the garage. What I wanna do before I outfit the entire inside with all of my shoe shelves, I am going to sand it. It's a little, a little not awesome. And then I am going to paint it. I'm just going to use some leftover paint. I'm gonna do white. I want to do like a shabby chic sort of vintagey kind of a vibe on the exterior. So I'm actually I'm not gonna care too much about getting it super smooth, getting all of the. I'm not I'm not gonna do that. I'm basically just gonna rough sand it all with my trusty palm sander, not sponsored by Black and Decker, 80 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna quickly go zoom 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 zoom, and then I'm going to paint it white and then I'm going to rough sand it again to give it that shabby chic look. First order of business is I'm gonna redo the outside. Then when we put in all of our shelves, I wanna lay it on its back so that we can, you know, put the shelves in. Sanding, painting, easy. For the most part, I have it pretty sanded. Now I feel like I need to take off the main, the main door, there's only one door. I need to take off the door and the hardware just so uh, there is, okay, you know, you know me. There's part of me that's like, you're gonna paint the whole inside and it's gonna be so great. I was thinking about getting my paint sprayer and just going whoosh, 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 to the inside. Then there's the lazy part of me that's like, don't even fucking touch the inside, dude. Just focus on the outside and call it a day. I mean, Everything looks fine, but either way, I do need to take this door off. It'll just make it easier to paint without messing up the hardware with paint. I could be as sloppy as I wanna be and not have to worry about it. And I'm gonna take this handle off because I do wanna try to clean this. I love this handle. And then really, I can get to painting. In my opinion, I want this to look really girly, even though it's just gonna be white. Shabby chic, I want it to look vintagey. I just want that look. I think that sloppily sanding and sloppily painting and sloppily sanding again is really gonna give me the look that I want. You know, I don't want it to look like it was freshly painted. Basically, I want it to look like this, but white. Like I just 
found it in some vintage store and it cost millions of dollars and it was owned by some Victorian princess and this is where she hung all of her dresses. That's what I want it to look like. I do not want it to be pristine. I don't think I'm gonna start painting right now. It's hell's a dark and it's cold out here. But I will take off this door and then I'll just kind of sand the areas I didn't get and wipe it all down so that it's ready for paint in the morning. in the garage. It is freezing. I have two sweatshirts on. I have a pair of jeans on and a pair of sweats over the top of that, plus two pairs of slippers, but it's fine. We're gonna get our wardrobe done. I did paint two super quick coats on the sides and the front and the door. What we're looking at right now is the back side of the wardrobe. I also grabbed a bunch of scrap one by half inch maybe wood that I had from taking out all of my door jams to put up the barn doors. So I am going to be repurposing this wood as my like shelf brackets. On the inside, I am going to mount these along the back and along the two sides. I just have to cut them to length remove all the nails, and then we will be good to go. Why we're looking at the back, you ask? Because I have my little measurements here, and what I wanna do is once these are cut to size, I know that my first shelf is gonna be 12 inches down from the top, and I have these little tiny baby screws that I'm gonna start in the back. Then I'm gonna take my little wood piece here, slather it in wood glue from the inside, put it in line where those little screws have peeked out, tape it in place and then come back here and jump, jump, jump. So the back side will have wood glue and screws supporting this little shelf bracket here. The sides I'm just gonna do with wood glue because I don't wanna open that whole can of worms of like countersinking the screws, then wood putting and then whatnot. So our first task is to cut our backboards to the appropriate length. And I'm just gonna use my jigsaw. So, according to my drawings, I have one, two, three, four, five shelves. I measured the inside of the cabinet and my little bars right here need to be cut. Thanks, dogs. It's like a never ending battle, no matter what neighborhood I'm in. No one gives a shit if I'm doing a DIY in the garage. It's real life, they have dogs next door. So I need to cut my support pieces of wood for my shelves at 46 and one quarter. Easy, easy. I'm gonna cut this one and then fit it and then I'll use this one as a template for the others. You know, you love it. Best tool in the world. Again, not sponsored by Black & Decker, but guys, if you watch the channel. Wouldn't it be cute if this was Black & Decker X? This is real life. That'd be so cute. Anyways, moving on, let's cut our wood. And it's only gonna take like a romp and we'll be done. Easy, let me just fit it inside real quick, make sure I measured it properly. I know, crazy. Oh, it fits, but silly me. <laughs> There is a piece of wood on the inside that runs down the center. And so when I put this in, it doesn't go flat with the back. So I actually need two pieces for the back, not one piece at 46 and a quarter. Oops, and I saw it there when I was measuring. I don't know what I was thinking, but let me go ahead and split this in half and then take out a little section to accommodate the wood that's back there. So as you can see, I need to accommodate for this because my little piece of wood does not sit flush against this back with this board here. So I need to measure from that corner to here and from here to that corner. And I'll put in a brace here and a brace here. Okay, so it turns out I need 10 pieces at 21 and a half inches long. No big deal, you saw how fast it was. I'm just gonna zip through those and then we'll be able to start a mounting. Now, these measurements are only for the back. Then once we have those in place, we'll measure each of the sides and then cut our side shelf brackets for that. So 
So that's done. I have my 10 pieces cut here, and now I wanna mark along the back where those shelf holders will be placed on the inside. According to my math, I want the top of the first shelf to be at 12 inches. And on the inside, I know that my shelf bracket is gonna be placed below the 12, so that my shelf sits at the 12. Get it? Get it? So, oh, 12. Okay, now that we have that marked, I'm gonna get my level, level draw line. If you didn't have a level, use a straight edge. You measure down 12. I'm gonna level it though. So I'm gonna line up all my little marks. Oh geez, don't push too hard, Sherry. You can't really see that line. As I was drawing it, I was thinking I should get a Sharpie. But trust me, there's a line there. There's also a car revving its engine. Yay, my neighborhood. Jeez Louise, this is really like the first long project I have done in this garage at this house. I had no fucking clue that it is Grand Central Station around here. And I thought my last neighborhood was bad. But you guys get it. It's real life. I live in a neighborhood. Thankfully, there's not a lot of kids playing. This neighborhood's full of old people, so. Now that our line is drawn, there is a piece of wood that comes in about an inch. So I know that my screws need to start about an inch in. I'm gonna do two screws on this half and two screws on this half. But I know that I'm also gonna have wood glue. The screws are like an extra insurance policy for me personally. This board is real, real thin back here. And I know my shoes aren't heavy, but the shelf is a little bit heavy. So at first I was thinking, you don't need any tools at all. Just lay this puppy down on its back, wood glue in these little support brackets, weight them down with like paint buckets or whatever for 24 hours until the wood glue dries. Depending on your cabinet that you're repurposing, you may be able to do that and be just fine with it. I'm just a little leery because this is so damn thin. So I'm gonna put a couple screws in. I'm gonna place my support beam right underneath this line. And I know that I wanna come in about an inch. I'm guesstimating about right there and about right there. No rhyme or reason, they're in the back, they're never gonna show. Get your drill with your Phillips head screw bit in place. What I wanna do is get these started. I just want them poked a little bit of the way through, but I want them definitely started, so. Okay. I'm thinking I have to fucking pre-drill. This is so thin it was starting to split already. So I'm gonna pre-drill now instead of placing these right away. The babiest, babiest of drill bits in my drill. Boom, easy. Boom, easy. Now we just need to do that four more times according to our measurements. Now from this line down, my spacing is gonna be 10 inches all the way down to the bottom. Whatever wardrobe you're redoing, you do your math accordingly. Divide it out, mark your marks, drill your pre-drills, and then you're good to go. Now that we've marked all our lines and pre-drilled everything, we can go in and put our little baby screws in just enough. Perfect. So, oh, I just almost dumped 200 tiny baby screws everywhere. Just a little bit, just so they're there. Barely poking through the inside. Yay, we have all of our screws just barely in there, and now we can turn this puppy around, grab our wood glue and some painter's tape, and work on the inside. We flipped her around, we're now looking at the inside. All of our little baby screws are just poking through, I can just barely feel them. And I have my wood glue, all of our bits and pieces here, and some painter's tape. Because what we wanna do is coat our pieces with wood glue, put them up here, I have a little level so I can double make sure they're level, tape them into place so that we can run behind and screw them in. Now from the inside, I have marked down my 12 inches. God, damn wood glue. Can someone make a better way to open this? Put two little tick marks, but I do have my little level so that when we get it in place, we can level it real quick and then we'll be good to go. Now, get your piece, slather that wood glue on, because the wood glue is really what we're going to be counting on to hold these into place. Make sure you're level, grab a piece of tape and tape that into place. Now, 
Run back behind real quick and put those screws in. I feel like I need to hold, but I can't. So I need to rethink my method here. The tape is not providing firm enough pressure. So when I push the screw in, it just pushes the wood piece away from the back. I can't hold it from the front and screw it from the back. My arms are not that long. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do is lay this down, take all the screws out of the back, wood glue in all of my pieces, tape them down to hold them in place until the wood glue is secure. Then I can stand it back up and put my screws in along the back. This is real life, we gotta make it work. If you had two people helping you, one person could literally hold the board from the front while you go in and screw from the back. But again, I'm only one person and my arms are only this long. They don't reach all the way around. So I'm gonna lay this down. I'm gonna wood glue in all my pieces, take them all down, make sure they're level. I don't know, go clean my bathroom. And then by the time I'm done, we'll stand this back up and we'll screw in everything from the back. Okay, so I'm inside of my wardrobe now and I've gotten six of my 10 wood pieces placed. I taped them down and I also have them being weighed down with paint cans. And then it was like, well, this was my fucking original plan. I didn't need to screw anything in to the back side. Oh, what a time suck. However, I am still gonna go in from the back and screw in from the back once these are dry. Also too, as I'm sitting here doing this, I'm thinking if you had the right size screws and a thick enough backing, you could screw in from the front to the back and just make sure your screws don't poke out the back side. I'm be, trying to be very careful in here and not to move anything around, but I feel like we're secure and I just need to put in the remaining four brackets. There are some cross beams in here that are kind of hitting exactly where I want my shelf to land. So I'm kind of adjusting my measurements on the inside, which means my pre-drilled screws from the outside won't line up on a few of them, but whatever. So some of my shelves might be like one inch wider instead of 10 apart. They might be 11 apart. Not a big deal. Yeah, I'm taking my piece. I'm slathering it with wood glue, like a bunch of wood glue. I feel like you can never use too much. <laughs> Making sure it's nice and level and pressing that down. Taking my painter's tape and taping it down really, really well, even though I'm also going to be weighing it down with paint cans. Now, again, I can't stress enough. I feel like you don't have to screw anything in if you let this wood glue cure and dry long enough with your paint cans on it. Use your best judgment to screw or not to screw. That is the question. So yeah, just keep doing this for as many shelves as you have. Okay, that's done. Now, while I'm waiting for that, I did get my plywood shelves pre-cut at the lows to the right length and width. However, because there's that little weird piece of wood that runs down the center, I need to cut a notch out of each of those shelves so that they fit flush with the back. I'm just gonna take my jigsaw and do that. My inside back pieces are dry enough. They've been sitting here for as long as it took me to cut notches out of all of my shelving and cut my side pieces to the proper length. And now I need to flip this on its side so I can do the five support pieces across the one side. And then when those are dry enough, I need to flip it to its other side and put the five support pieces on that side. And I'm freezing and my nose is running. But yeah, all's good. Okay, so I have put in the five little shelf bracket boards on one side and I have them weighed down with paint cans and they're all taped into place. While that's getting dry enough, I am gonna go now to the back side. I'm gonna go and drill in my screws from the back in just to give those pieces some extra security. Then, I don't wanna paint the inside. I just decided I'm not gonna paint the inside. However, since my shelving is out of plywood. I don't really want to paint that either, except for it is, you know, it's plywood. 
So what I'm thinking is, in the meantime, after I get the screws drilled in from the back, I think I'm gonna run over to the Dollar Tree and go get me a bunch of rolls of the Dollar Tree contact paper. And then I'm gonna cover my shelves in contact paper so they're nice and smooth and they don't look like plywood. But right now, we gotta drill our screws in from the back. Okay, I'm super excited because while I was waiting for all of our inside brackets to like dry and whatnot, I finished my paint technique. I am in love with it. It looks like possibly two or three princesses have owned this over the years. I lightly sanded that initial white paint that I did. I sanded that and then I rubbed the entire thing in dark brown stain. And then I rubbed that off and it gave sort of like a aged, dare I say, owned by a smoker for 17 years and turned kind of like a nicotine yellow. So then I whitewashed so I just got some white paint and some water, mixed it to a really thin consistency, and then rubbed that all over, probably about three or four times, to bring up the white and take away some of that yellow. But what I really wanted that stain was in all the little cracks and crevices, because then once my whitewash was dry, I went back with my sander and hit all of these edges and got all of this wonderful detail, and I love it. So it's now in my room, and we're gonna take off all of our painter's tape. I also covered all of my shelves in the Dollar Tree contact paper, which to be quite honest with you, is not very contactable. I only had to use one roll per each shelf, but I did want it to go over the front edge and wrap underneath. But since it wasn't sticking, I secured it with blue painter's tape. No one's gonna see that, it's fine. Now all we have to do is take all this off and put our shelves in and everybody, cross your fucking fingers because if these shelves don't fit properly, yeah. Blue tape off. We are ready to put these shelves in. The best scenario for this, because this cabinet in particular has sides, so we can't just put the shelf in as it is. What you need to do if you have a similar situation is you wanna put all the shelves in at the bottom. So just get them all in there stacked on top of each other at the bottom and then you can lift and do the top, then the second one and the third one and so on and so on. So I'm gonna lay these in here. Oh, everybody. Do I wanna kill myself? Everybody, do I wanna kill myself yet? What is happening? <laughs> Why? This is, this is what I, uh, I had these cut to size for me from the guy at the Lowe's and I gave him my measurements, but I didn't fit them. It's real fucking snug, I'll tell you that. Oh no, oh no. I might not be able to get these in. Cause you know why? I'll tell you why. It's my fault. Fuck. There, shoe shelf, it's beautiful. I have to go trim the back, I think. I think I have to trim the back. I'll show you. Fuck my life. Okay, so when I was measuring, I measured it from the back, this back to here, to the front here. However, there is this bit of wood. Do you see how far it's sticking out right here? Yeah, I didn't take into account that. My shelf is from here to here, but this little piece of wood is not accommodating my shelf. Someone, can someone, can someone please shoot me? Shoot me. Okay, so this is not the end of the world. This is just a minor bump in the road. I need to take all of my shelves back out to my garage and trim the long side where I've created all my cute little notches, probably a good half an inch off of each one. And I'm gonna do it with my contact paper on and I hope it doesn't get fucked up. But if it does, I'm gonna go get my jigsaw and it's gonna be quick work, so I'll be back. Okay. So again, just a minor mishap. And you know, this is real life. I'm gonna walk you guys through everything. Could I have just deleted the part of the video where the shelves didn't fit? Yeah. Then could I have gone back out in the garage and trimmed them accordingly and then brought you back in and pretend like everything was perfect? I totally could have. But that doesn't happen in real life. When you're working on a DIY, Shit fucking goes awry sometimes and you need to just Tim gun it out. And again, not the end of the world. Did it take 10 more extra minutes? Yeah, but 
they're in. And I have them all down here at the bottom so that I can now lift them into place. So they're a super snug fit, I'm not gonna lie. And just fitting in this one was kind of a pain in the ass. I'm sure these will all be just as big of pains in my ass. But they're snug, the fit's tight, so that's a plus, right? Lift, put it in, lift, put it in. It's not gonna go smoothly, just trust me, it's not. I'm gonna probably cut a million times, but that's fine. So we're gonna lift this up. Ooh, say, son of a bitch! Oh shit. Oh jeez. Woo! I got one! Look at that! That looks pretty! <sighs> You know what my other thing is? Is like I cut it so it's like right up to the edge. I hope when I put the door on, the door doesn't like sit back or the door won't close all the way. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Ugh. Ooh, that one in much nicer. Ah, suck it, suck it. Look at that. Are you picturing all of the shoe sort? You guys, hold, hold on. I just got these, but look. I know, now picture it all the way full. Okay, so all I have to do is put these shelves in place, put the door on, fill it with my shoes, and then you guys can see the final reveal! Okay, I have organized all my shoes, I put the door back on, and you guys are gonna die. I know I say that every time, but really this time, I think you might pass out. So sit down, because here comes the final reveal. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, look at it, oh my gosh, look at it, just look at it. Now, it gets better, it gets better. Are you ready? Hold on. Uh, 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 oh. God, Magnum, seriously? <gasps> I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. I need some lighting. I definitely need some lighting in there because the shoes in the back, you can't really see, especially on the black shelf. Can't really see what those are, but seriously. And there is a mirror behind the door in my office that I'm gonna repurpose and put on the back right here. <gasps> Look at all the shoe storage. I love it so much. I mean, what can I say? Amazing, amazing. And you saw this shitty situation I had for my shoes before this. I'm just saying. This once was a wardrobe, a closet. There, I, I still left the closet rods up there at the top just because I think they're cute. But I took a wardrobe that I found at the Amvet store for 79 bucks, slapped a coat of paint on it, Put some shelving in it. Now the shelving, because wood is so expensive, cost me $60. I bought one long eight foot by four foot sheet of pretty nice plywood. It was $58. I did have the person at the Lowe's cut it for me as per my measurements, which then I just adjusted. And then five for the contact paper from the Dollar Tree. Paint I had on hand. I had my stain on hand. The little shelf brackets that we made in in the back, recycled that. So all in all, 60 bucks in the wood and then 70 for the unit. Sounds expensive because it is expensive. However, if you try to find anything for shoe storage online, it's pricey, even the shit at Ikea and none of it has this much charm. So it just goes to show you, you can take something that was something and give it a new life and turn it into something else. Something that you can use for storage, for decor, what have you. It's just about thinking outside of the box. What are your needs? Find something that will fit those needs with a few minor alterations and you will have a one of a kind piece. Honestly, if I would have measured the shelves properly, the guy at the Lowe's would have cut them properly. You wouldn't need any sort of a saw or anything. Wood glue is all you really need for the backing. Now, because I did have some weird wood pieces on the inside, I did need to use my jigsaw to cut out little notches in the back of the shelving. However, if the inside of your cabinet is pretty flush all the way around, you could get away 
with creating something very similar to this with some wood glue, spare paint, and some scrap wood. I know, doesn't get much better than that for a DIY if you ask me. And I have room to grow. This shelf is not full. I can fit 12 pair of shoes on each one of these shelves. That is amazing. So I have room to grow here and room to grow on the bottom. And now the floor of my closet is all cleaned out. Those shitty white cabinets that were just hand-me-downs from like the laundry room of this house, those are gone. And now I have this beautiful piece and I'm so, so happy with it. So yeah. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so that you are alerted to all of the DIY Wednesday videos I push out, which is every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.